guys I'm looking at a Goodman package unit I put in in 2009 it is my and it is totally boxed in now with shrubbery snakes and all sorts of creatures I hope to find them we have a blank thermostat so I'm gonna see if we have power out here we got the reed multimeter out or the sorry mega ohm meter we have a, a line set right there you can't really see it on the contactor one down there on the ground I'm gonna turn it on too 500 volts. Let's see what we got. Well, hold on. Let's see if it's on. Well, that's a dead short. Let's see where it's at. We'll take the compressor off and Taking check. Taking the two it. leads off of the contactor for the compressor. We have our black and red there. We're also going to yank off our lead down there on the capacitor going to the compressor. And we'll test again with them disconnected. Alright, we have our Three compressor wires disconnected. Try it again. Test. Looks like that's what it is. Let's go to the compressor itself. Guys, we're looking down in there at the compressor. We have one wire on one of the compressor terminals. The other one is clamped onto one of the copper. The sensing tubes. Let's see here. Nothing. She's dead. Super. Good morning, gentlemen. Today I'm heading over to a house to change out the compressor. It's a system I put in in 2009. An old Goodman system, a GPH 1424. The compressor has grounded in that system, so I'm going to go switch it out. It's a copeland scroll. Switch out the dryer, get things back going again. So I come along for the ride and enjoy the excitement of HVAC. Guys, I've recovered my refrigerant. I have cut my lines loose from the compressor. I'm going to take the bolts out next and tape up the lines while I take this compressor back for warranty and get my new one. one two, and we will catch up on the flip I side. I tell you what, I have fallen many times, but of late. I have faced a trial I've yet to face I marched in fire I stood tall with your help But on this line I'm too weak to help myself Oh, I'm not fine And I don't know why I got so torn up and Guys, I just stopped by East Coast to pick up the new Copeland Scroll compressor. And I think there's something interesting about, you know, when you get a replacement compressor for some of these units, you don't get a dryer. When you get an evaporator from them, or you get, I got a reversing valve recently, those had dryers in them. But the compressor doesn't. I just, it kind of, I wonder why that is. It's kind of weird. You think the compressor would be the one you'd want a dryer with the most? Because some of the other repairs, I know people have different opinions on changing dryers, but I don't think changing dryers is necessary on every single repair you do where you open the system. I know it's a good rule of thumb, I just, I don't always do that. But on a compressor, it's sort of imperative, so it's kind of strange that that's the one they don't give you a dryer for. So, but, I picked up a dryer. So I have a dryer now, I'm going back to the house and we're going to get this compressor put in, switch out the dryer. Go ahead and restart the package unit. The new compressor is in place, the mounting bolts are back in place. I take that tape off and get the sandpaper on that tubing there. We can fit it back up. There's enough play in those tubes, but even if you cut them off a little short, you can still bring them back over there and put them right in there. That's why I do it. Most of the time, that's the way it is. Some of the tighter quarters that might not be possible.
check it with some nitrogen real quick. Put about 70 pounds, 75 pounds of pressure on it just to check real quick. But it looks like we're holding, I don't hear anything. So we're gonna move on to start getting to where the dryer's at. about 150 pounds of pressure on the system I'll leave it here for a few minutes we can spray paint that dryer here as soon as we confirm nothing's leaking we can move on to pulling a vacuum and then recharging the unit guys we're in a vacuum now our pressure test hold for about 20 minutes right around 151 152 psi vacuums coming down of course pulling a vacuum on the entire system you have the compressor the new compressor the accumulator with the oil with the refrigerant trapped in it it's gonna take a little while down in the 400s now we're still going downward let it keep on rolling my scales are not on my truck because my wife was using it to measure package weights for the for postage so I have to borrow a scale but luckily my brother is in the area about five miles east of here in Bayshore so I think I'll be able to borrow his scale so hopefully he he'll stick around or bring it over there to me be the best thing but probably won't do that because I wouldn't do that shit for him either. Guys, I put five, five pounds, about five ounces of refrigerant into the machine. I changed out the capacitor. I had this uh, switch cap deal from Diversitech laying around, so it's been sitting on the truck forever, so I decided I'd just use it. You can basically hit little switches on the bottom of it and set it up for whatever microfarad rating you want. We had 40 slash five, so I have it reading about 39 point something and 5.6 from my buttons I pushed. So we're going to start the unit up and hopefully it'll take off and everything will be happy and everybody will live happily. Guys, we're running in heat mode right now. Actually, we have a 30 degree split. Our suction pressure is coming up. I'm sure it'll come up a little bit more than where it's at right now. But as you see right now, we're below freezing. It's a cool day outside. We're in the uh, mid low 60s. So we'll run a lower suction pressure, but it shouldn't be quite that low. So it should come up. We're going to flip it into cooling too. We're actually in heating right now. So we'll put it in cooling and put a profile on it and check the charge that way. Okay guys, we're looking at it in cooling now, 251 over 126 there about. 25 degrees superheat, 14 degrees subcooling. Let's go through the line here. So our first probe, second probe, and then we've got 25 degrees superheat. It's 69 outside, a little warmer than I thought. Supply air, 59, 76% relative humidity. So we have a 867.9% relative humidity. So what we're looking at there, is a relatively low split, so it should be 13, 14 degrees, somewhere in there. Let's see where we're at. So we're at target head pressure 272, 
23.4 target superheat, so we're pretty close there. Target suction pressure, we're a little bit higher than that, but maybe I was wrong about that high efficiency evaporator. So, 14.2. Pretty good. So, pretty close. We'll see how high it gets, because I'm, I'm sure we don't have super airflow. So, we'll see. Guys, we just left that compressor change out. That was a warranty compressor. The unit was installed in 2009. Copeland Scroll Compressor. GPH 14, 14 Sear. Qualified for the tax credit back then. I installed the unit. So I'm you know, a little disappointed. We talk about Goodman being disappointing and not to beat a dead horse, but you know, if it's due, it's due. And if it's true, it's true. So let me tell you a little bit about this Goodman unit. Goodman unit in 2009, or somewhat, and forgive me, of a clusterfuck. This unit was installed, I think it was December 2009. In January of 2009, got a call. The unit's really loud. The unit's loud. It's making a lot of noise. It's like glass inside of a barrel. Well, the reversing valve was stuck in center. Whenever you have a reversing valve stuck in center, it sounds like holy hell. It does sound like a trash can full of glass and metal be shaking. So I replaced the reversing valve, you know, a month old. Goodman was paying people to do this back then because it was happening all the time with reversing valves. It seems like every few years there's a new thing that happens all the time. Like the evaporators leak, the reversing valves get stuck. Back in the day, the TXVs got stuck. TXVs get stuck now for a different reason. It seems like there's always, you know, something's not quite right. So I'd replaced the no TXV in this machine is actually pistons, even though it's 14 sear, which is kind of nice. The pistons have remained fully functional. <laughs> so I replaced the reversing valve. That was the first repair. Um, the X13 motor was next. The X13 motor died. After that, the evaporator coil started to leak. So if you saw from the video, you could probably see the aluminum coming out there. It has aluminum evaporator coil instead of a copper one. So that leaked. And then we had the heat kit. There was an issue with the heat kit too. I don't remember what it was, whether it was a sequencer or something like that. So that's, I think, four issues. And the fifth was the compressor. So everything on this unit has uh, shit the bed, basically. So you can understand where folks like myself like Israel would be upset about the issues we've had with Goodman. People always say it, and I've heard it before, you know, everything has problems. Well, it's true, and everything does have problems, but when you're facing the brunt of all the problems from a particular brand, you have hard feelings toward that brand. That's just the way it is. You know, if all this was from Ream, I'd be pissed at Ream right now, but I don't have problems with Ream because I don't install Ream. I'm sure they screw up too. So that's just a little bit of background on that unit. It's been some, sort of a problem child. Hopefully it'll function well for a while. Who knows? Who knows? Hopefully it will. But I just wanted to explain a little bit about the unit, how many issues it's had over the years.